Good day, doctor. My name is Huang Jing from H. Eternity 2. Now I'm going to present the abstract of this assignment with the title of The Effect Towards the Economic Growth in Malaysia by Interest Rates and Inflation. This research examines the effect towards the economic growth in Malaysia by interest rate and inflation. eViews 11 was used to run and retrieve data for the dependent variable, which is economic growth as well as independent variables which are interest rate and inflation. Data of this study are based on annually and employed for 30 years from year 1989 until year 2018. The findings of this study reveal that there was a significant effect from interest rates towards economic growth in Malaysia while there was no significant effect from inflation towards economic growth in Malaysia. Hence, it shows that the interest rate is significant and it does influence the economic growth in Malaysia based on the regression result. That's all from me. Now, I will pass it to the, my group mate, Ang Wayin, to present the introduction of this assignment. Thank you. Good day everyone, my name is Ang Wei Yen and my matrix number is BG19110370. So today I'm here to talk about my first part which is introduction for my group assignment title The Effects Towards the Economic Growth in Malaysia by Interest Rate and Inflation. So let's see the first part of this study which is background of the study. Interest rate is the amount that a borrower is charged by a lender for the use of assets that represent as a percentage of principal where the assets that can be borrowed includes consumer goods, cash or even major assets such as buildings and vehicles. Inflation rate is the rate which the currency value falls and at the same time, the prices for goods and services in general level rises. It can be contrasted with deflation where it happens when the purchasing power of money increases while the prices decline. So, these both elements, which is interest rate and inflation, can affect Malaysia economic growth in the future. Let's move on to 1.2, which is statement of the research problem. This study will be capturing how both interest rate and inflation would give impact on the economic growth in Malaysia for the past 30 years, which is from year 1989 to year 2018. Malaysia is a country that known for its strong economic policies that help to maintain low inflation as well as sustainable gross domestic product growth in the Malaysian economy. The growth in economic can be contributed by increasing capital goods, technology, human capital, etc. For instance, we had faced sharp depreciation of Ringgit Malaysia RM as well as critical financial crisis in the Asian countries in year 1997 and year 1998 that affect Malaysian economic growth rate. However, the inflation rate has been remained at a relatively low level which strikes one mind whether the way of doing it is fruitful or not. Therefore, it is significant to do a research on the effect that brought towards economic growth in Malaysia by interest rate and inflation to really understand this matter. Move on to the third part of this study, which is objective of the study. The objective of this study is to determine the effect of interest rate and inflation towards the economic growth in Malaysia. For this study, we already set one main objective. However, we have set another three secondary objective for this study. The first one is to identify major monetary instruments that help in developing economic growth in Malaysia. The second one will be to study how the fluctuations of interest rate will give impact to the growth of economic in Malaysia. And the third one is to examine the inflation rate that may cause effect on the economic growth in Malaysia. Last but not least, we have come to the significance of the study. The finding of this research will provide some fruitful information as well as further understanding to university students, academics, etc. regarding on the impacts of Malaysian economic growth causes by inflation rate and also interest rate. Therefore, this research would target the Malaysia's interest rate and inflation 
to provide a more accurate information using methods such as methodological, theoretical, and so on. This research is with the where students or future research can refer to this study in order to give them a better understanding on this topic. So that's all from my part. Next, uh, I will be passing to my next member to discuss about the second part of this study, which is literature review. Thank you. My name is Li Zixuan. Matrix number BG one nine one one zero two four two. And today I'm going to present literature review. First of all, we have empirical review in our literature review. As mentioned in the introduction, the inflation rate has been remained at a very low level. This literature reviews reviews that the studies of inflation, interest rate, and the economic grow in Malaysia. Besides, economic stability is very crucial to Malaysian people as it helps macroeconomics to achieve its objective to sustain the economic growth and also stabling their price. There is one term in economic literature which is stagflation. Stagflation means that empirical phenomenon. It is a circumstance that describes increasing of inflation and decreasing or stable output. Thus, the case in practice is not only showing positive relationship. Monetarists had also indicated that in the long run, prices are mostly influenced by the money supply protecting with no result of growth. In contrast, it is said to be more vigorous during financial crisis due to assertive monetary policy easing can drive adverse feedbacks looks less likely and it is said to be the fact that monetary policy is more stronger. This inflation risk is dangerous and can bring a lot of negative impacts to Malaysia. As the inflation rises, the purchasing power of money is becoming weaker. Thus, it will indirectly affect household lifestyle and also for investors, they will be facing the changes in real return of their investment. Next, we are moving to theoretical review. Abdul Aziz Farid Shameh and Marwan Mohammad Abu Orabi 2013 stated that there is positive relationship between current interest rate has an influence on power of growth rate. Magda Kandil 2014 also stated that the allocation of monetary policy shocks between the price, inflation, and output growth is pointed out by the time series, basis, and sample data of the counties. Barry Bosworth 2012 also stated that the capital markets are extremely non-segregated or the global level and that it makes little discern to the model. Khan and Sanhaji 2001 also stated that inflation has a negative and significant influence in economic growth in the medium run and long run. Vikesh Gokal and Sabrina Hani 2004 also stated that the findings and the result shows that there is a negative relationship between inflation and growth that is statistically significant enough and economically interesting magnitude. Mandel and Tobin 1966 also stated that positive relationship between the rate of inflation and the rate of capital formation 
which in turn indicates a positive relationship between the two variables. Hello, my name is Willy Shan and I'm going to present methodology. Model specification. Model which specify is y equals to beta 0 plus beta 1, x1 plus beta 2, x2 plus mu t. y equals to GDP, x1 equals to inflation, and in x2 is interest rate. mu t equals to error term of control variable. mu t equals to error term of control variable. In this study case, dependent variable is gross domestic product, which is GDP, and independent variable is inflation and interest rate. Method estimation Ordinary least square OLS is used to run in this study to obtain the best model for identifying the strength of relationship between variables. This method can minimize sum of square in difference between observed and predict value of GDP. Next is estimation strategy. Estimation strategy include descriptive statistic, multiple regression, heterostaticity, autocorrelation, and multicollinearity. Descriptive statistic is a quantitatively described of the data feature. Multiple regression is an extension of simple linear regression used in forecasting GDP based on inflation and interest rate. Heterostaticity is present the variability differs across value of inflation and interest rate. Autocorrelation is a context of time series data which to observe a period value compared with another period of value. Multicollinearity to identify the correlation between inflation and interest rate in the strength of correlation. Next is data description. Data collect from International Monetary Fund, which is IMF. Inflation rate was calculated by ourselves using Consumer Price Index (CPI) from IMF. Period of data is annually 30 years, from 1989 until 2018. Eview version 11 is employed to conduct the extracted data. That's all from me, thank you. Hi, it's me again. Now I'm going to present the empirical findings, starting with descriptive statistics. The table shows that the dependent variable, which is GDP growth, has the largest standard deviation. It reveals that it is the most inconsistent variable, followed by inflation. Interest rate shows the least inconsistent among all variables. GDP, inflation, and interest rate are relatively skewed to the right as the data is positive. Three data have ketosis less than value 3 as shown in the table. Platycotic tails are thinner and shorter than a normal distribution and often its central peak is lower and wider. Probability of the Jaguar statistics surpass the observed value under the null hypothesis. The variables are above the significant level of 0.05. Hence, we do not reject to the null hypothesis of a normal distribution. Next is multiple regression. Multiple regression postulates two or more than two independent variables to explain the variable relationship between one dependent variable and multiple independent variables. Based on the table, probability value of inflation is 0 0.5759. It reveals that there is 0 0.57 or 57% chance that the real value of the parameter could be zero. Adjusted R squared value is 0 0.729393 which reveals that 72.94% of the economy growth. Besides that, F statistics and Prop F test the overall significance of the regression model. Zero chance in 100 that all the regression parameters are zero due to the value of Prop F has a value of zero. The Win watson statistic that tests for, for autocorrelation in the residuals from statistical analysis is 0 0.272043 demonstrates the positive autocorrelation. Next, I will pass it to my groupmate Cheryl 
to continue from 4.3 to 4.5. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Cheryl Tanning and my matrix number is PG1911-0347. So now, I will continue to present part 4.3 to 4.5 in empirical finding. So let us see what is 4.3. 4.3 heteroscedasticity. This is the data that we run from eView. Heteroscedasticity is used to view the difference of the residual variance. The inverse of heteroscedasticity is homoscedasticity, which is used to view the statistical variance. We use the white test to run this heteroscedasticity's result. So the rule of the white test is, if the value is smaller than 0.05, it is a significant value. So it means that the result is heteroscedasticity. However, if the value is greater than 0.05, which is its significant value, it means that the result is homoscedasticity. So as you can see from the table, the p-value shows 0.8592, which is greater than 0.05, significant value. So there is no evidence for the presence of heteroscedasticity because it is insignificant value. Therefore, the null hypothesis is accepted. So the next one, 4.4 autocorrelation. This is the data. Autocorrelation also as known as serial correlation. It is the correlation between the semaphore and its delay replication and it is a function of delay. We apply two legs in this autocorrelation test. All the result is based on Bruch Godfrey test. So as you can see from the table, the p-value is smaller than 0.05, so it is a significant value. Therefore, autocorrelation exists in this research. So the next one, also the last one, 4.5 multicollinearity. This is the data that we run from eView. So multicollinearity will occur because in a regression model, two or more than two independent variables will be strongly correlated with each other. It means that both independent variables can predict from each other in a regression model. There is various ways to detect the multicollinearity, but in this research, we focus more on variance inflation factors VIF. VIF de determines how well the independent variables is explained by other variables. So, there is no correlation between the inflation and interest rate. Why? Because the center VIF for both variables is less than value 10. So, that's all from me. Thank you. And now, I will pass to my next group mate to present the part conclusion. Thank you. Good day, everyone. It's me again. So now I'm going to discuss about 5.0 conclusion, which is the last part of our group assignment study. So for the first part, I will talk about the summary of this study. Based on the outcome found, it shows that significant impact occurred between both interest rate and inflation rate towards economic growth in Malaysia, whereby it is playing a vital role in the economic growth. This study also found that the variable, which is interest rate, has the greatest influences on gross domestic product where it is said to be the major contributor. With existing interest, borrowers will immediately spend money rather than saving the money to make the purchases. However, there are no significant effects in inflation towards the economic growth in Malaysia. Inflation means that the prices of goods increase, the purchasing capacity decrease and increase in interest rate that makes it more difficult to add new production capacity. The influence of independent variables towards dependent variable will fully depend on how the country's economic conditions. Therefore, the government as well as the economists should manage and evaluate wisely to ensure that each decision made is for the sake of the country itself. So, for 5.2 and 5.3, I will pass to another member which is Sharatan to discuss about it. 
Hello, it's me again, Cheryl. So now, I will continue to present part 5.2 and 5.3 from conclusion. 5.2 Policy Implication Several issues has risen in the development of economic in Malaysia. In general, the primary monetary policy of Bank Negara Malaysia and other central bank as well is price stability whereby it is in the form of lower inflation rates. Therefore, implementing monetary policy instruments are necessary in central bank to work on consistently monitoring the monetary aggregates as well as influencing the changes of output, prices and economic development. It will affect the interest rate and inflation rate of a country Thereby, it will also influence the economic growth in Malaysia with implementation of monetary policy. For instance, monetary policy used in the economy can help a country to concentrate in controlling the short-term interest rate, whereby the form of prime lending rates and treasury bills rate will be acting as an important tool in admitting monetary impulses for the performance of economy. So the next one and also the last one, 5.3 Limitation and Suggestions We have two limitations in this research. The first one, Geographical Limitations We only study the statistics and information for the effect towards the economic growth in Malaysia by interest rate and inflation. International Monetary Fund IMF can be used to retrieve the data for many countries. However, we only use to retrieve the data based in Malaysia. The next limitation is limited observations. Both data and review of results provided in this study was only based on 30 observations which is from year 1989 to year 2018. Hence, it will not be accurate for any other years because it was only meant to study the data period for 30 years. So we also have two suggestions in this research. The first one, utilizing a ma large, larger measure of information because it helped in constructing the interest and preciseness of the tested information. The last suggestion is utilizing daily and quarterly information in the long run information. It helped the market analyze to get the superior results for what they are prospecting. That's all from our research and thank you for watching. Bye bye.